So here we go, probably the most unbelievable climbing performance you will have ever seen in your life. Stage 15, stage 16, sorry, of the 2015 Giro, up the Mortarolo, up the Passo del Tonale, and the Campo Carlo Magno. Anyway, this is the situation on the road. Contador had a puncture, and everyone decided, you know what, let's go full. So, um, this is the issue. So, at the moment, obviously, they're all together, but Contador is about to have a puncture, and everyone decides, you know what, let's go full and split it. So we will zoom ahead to 44.5 kilometers to go. Constor is 51 seconds behind. The break has been caught. And he's 51 seconds behind with no teammate. You just saw he, he pulled off. And constor has got to go catch Astana. And Astana at this moment had uh, Mika Lander on the front. Fabio was in the group. Kreisweit was in the group. Trofimov was in the group. You can see young Aspan Chavez on the wheel. Uh, they had more than that, to be fair. I think you can also see um, Paolo Tiralongo there, um, who's at the moment... Uh, on the front and obviously Lando who just looks like he's going out for just a nice Sunday ride then you've got like um Kreisweig, Trofimov, he looks very similar to Zacharin but slightly you know similar styles anyway Contador is just flying up this climb the, the motorway is steep it's like nine ten percent the whole time but significant ramps so I mean they look like they're doing like 20k an hour up here and you can see people getting spat riser Hezadal they used to be decent was, was in trouble and like now it's just Lando on the front and Lando's like right we're gonna fall and at this point it was pretty obvious Lando was stronger. Um, we've got some nice sort of like Contador going around. I tried to edit this, but to be honest, just watch the whole thing. I mean, I'm not going to commentate half an hour because I think you might find that a bit boring. But there's a full video um, which I can I can post below. But anyway, Contador gets some help out from his mates. I believe this is it. You got Anton, who's like, you know what? We'll, we'll sort you out with a decent decent draft. We're good mates in Spain, both sort of. No one in the GC for Mobistar, um, because uh, Amador had got spat, so, you know, might as well help him out. And anyway, Contador just puts on an exhibition. This is the climbs he's best at. Froome, you know, he's good at the steep stuff as well, but, you know, certain people like the less steep stuff. There's Vazem Kirienko in the break, um, but, you know, Contador loves these super steep climbs where he's just out the saddle and just flying. But we've sort of narrowed it down already at the front. You see Trofimov, like two from Katusha. Trofimov literally did nothing. After this Giro, more or less, but it was very, very impressive in this Giro. Um, but Contador's now got it down to 38 seconds. The timing was a little bit wrong. I think it was more like 33 seconds, but nonetheless, Contador was absolutely flying on this day. There's, I don't know who he, that lad is. I think it might be Buongiorno or someone. He's absolutely tiny. He's like a little pencil. Um, and they're all getting spat. Kreisweit, Kreis you can see, is, he was quite far down the general, to be fair, um, at this moment in time, but he did a pretty decent ride. And I believe, yeah, Buongiorno sorts him out. Um, and says, don't worry, Contador, I'll um, give you a little, shit, a, a little help. Obviously, you know, at this moment in time, the draft is not unbelievable, but, you know, they're going 16 to 20 kilometers an hour up this climb, depending on how steep it is. And, you know, you can feel a draft. Um, but anyway, Zachary at the back, drop him off his third wheel, then you've got Kreisweit and Arrow already. Obviously, Arrow always looks like he's dying on the bike. I mean, you've never seen a picture of Arrow when he's looking, like, really comfortable on the bike. Um, but, you know, even at this point, you know, more, Astana had fucked up their tactics a lot. Like when I say that, I mean I mean like a lot. They really, really didn't help themselves at all. You can see there's Riser Hestel getting spat. There's Amador getting spat. There's Carlos Betancourt getting spat. Everyone, I mean, Lander is going full because they know if they manage to get over the top, and there's what four of them, they're all going to work to distance Contador. And Contador had you know a three minute GC lead, maybe more at this point in time. So there was a big motivation in order to go on the front. And Lander is going full. And obviously the draft on this climb is not that good. So, you know, you've got it. I think that's a Stefan Kuhn on the right hand side on the BMC kit. Uh, I'm not sure who this AG2R rider is. The commentators, Rob, Rob Hatch, did a good job. But I can't remember who he said it was. I was watching this before. But obviously the brain's not was there. There's a CCC rider. Love to see them. Uh, and Contador's just, you, like, obviously these guys are fresh. Because, like, you know, they're riding you know, zone two, zone three easy up at this climb. And then when Contador comes past, they'll ride it six, six and a half words per kilo on the front to sort him out. But obviously... Contador's got to do that the whole time. They're just doing you know, maybe five minutes on the front. So sometimes it go a bit too hard for Contador, but he knows exactly what he's doing. I love those yellow boa dyes he's got on his shoes. They look a bit. He's just looking like prime Contador in his best, best condition ever. We'll skip ahead, 41 kilometers to go. Still, it's like three left now. Arrow's getting spat. Riza Hestel's getting spat. Trofimov's there as well. And um, Contador's getting across. It's 28 seconds now. It's coming down. And, you know, if your arrow... Uh, Arrow's directly do tell Arrow. I mean, Arrow's suffering big time. Look like he bonked or something. I mean, he was looking terrible. But at the same time, I think on these climbs, you really get to see who's strongest because let's say it was six, seven percent. 
you know, arrow could be 5% down on that day, but in the wheels, you wouldn't tell. Maybe if you attacked him a lot, you'd be able to tell. But in the wheels, you know, he could sit in. He might be going for like 98% and through might be going 95% or something like that. You know what I mean? But on this, it's like if you're going 100% the whole time, land is going 97%. By the time on this long climb, when it's steep, the gaps are going to start to tell. And Contador, you can see, he isn't... He's definitely not riding smooth. You'll you'll see he really tries to he rides to average speed, not pa a lot of power. You can sort of tell because he'll put in big digs to keep the speed up. You know he really rides on the feel of the climb, which I think is more exciting to watch necessarily. But it's just you know it's the way he's going to ride. He's not just going to look at that. like now he's grinding massively. He's got more gears to go. You can see he's he's got thirty four, thirty two. I believe he said on the day, which is super easy gearing. It's it's, it's what you want up this climb, um, even if you're a pro, just because. Why grind if you have to? But Contador seems to like it. Like if you saw that, you'd be like, he's gonna get spat. But Contador's, you know, he's very used to it. Out climbing out the saddle is his speciality. And I don't know why the timing is said a minute. It's it's not a minute. And Cries right here, you can see he was on the limit before when Lander was going full, and now he's looking pretty relaxed. They're spread out across the road, and that's because Aru is not in top condition at all. Um, Vibra is really struggling, and this is where tactically you've got to think. Like if if let's say. It wasn't Lander, let's say, you know, Arrow's in top condition. It was a domestic who was like, you know, 20 minutes down the GC. They would have ridden full for the first like 5, 10k, try and break Contador. Because Contador obviously would have tried to get back as quickly as possible. Try and break him and then attack across. And you can see here, they are in the same shot. Obviously on the road it looks a lot shorter. It's still like a 10, 15 second gap because um, it's so steep. Ryder has the is the winner of the 2012 Giro. I've never actually seen that one because I don't think there's too many race highlights. But I think I do need to have a little watch. Um, maybe make a video of him because he's pretty understand like a Canadian winning a Grand Tour is a pretty rogue but Kreisweit decided to go off um, I tried to find his power file but on Strava because back in the day Kreisweit used to upload power like 2015 uh, the 2016 Giro which he almost won um, he did upload his power uh, which is pretty interesting um, but anyway he um, he stopped doing that but he also on this one apparently lost his file which is a big shame because I wanted to see once put in this selective sort of van that console would have had to do because you could have seen the time differences you know he was like 45 seconds 50 seconds down on on cries like and you know you might be saying okay yeah fair enough like were they really going full but i mean they were going full until arrow cracked and now you can see arrow's really cracking i mean some people will just say oh he doesn't have enough fuel i mean i i not maybe but i mean i i don't really think it's it's necessary that sometimes you just don't have their legs and you know on a day like this you know in a grand tour they always say you're gonna have an off day and it just depends what it happens it happens to happen during a sprint stage you'll get away with it, it happens to happen in a Mountain stage with six percent climbs, you might get away with it. Happens on the Motorola stage with two decent climbs before, no chance. And you can see here, Lander's just riding. I mean, he's looks. I mean, he's not riding full. You can say by the the way he's riding, like Lander never looks like he's tired, but you can tell he's not riding full. He's still getting dropped. And also, Kreisweit, Lander's a better climb than Kreisweit. Um, yeah, even at this time. Um, and you know, Kreisweit's pulling away. Um, Kreisweit does a sensible thing here. Um, I think he knows he's the le least explosive. Man's never won a bike race. He's never ever won. He's won GC. He's never ever won a stage um, professionally. So, you know, he knows he's got no sprint. He's a perennial GC man and he knows what to do. His talent is riding G is riding full on the climbs. And that's what he does. He doesn't like to do anything else. Um, and, you know, fair enough. He gets paid for it. And that's it. So he's decided to just sack it all off um, and just ride full. And they can catch up if they want. But he's just interested in gaining a podium you know i mean he knows that it's going to be hard with lander arrow and constable all that but he's thinking you know if i can get fifth place in the jira probably get pay rise get some more uci points um maybe get stage one if they really mess around but it was also just for him i mean it's like such a steep climb it's not like you're going to get that much benefit in the draft like you'll obviously get some but it's um the accelerations the way constable climbs compared to him like he'll just ride it even power obviously surge a little bit but generally even power um because he's obviously more more of a slow and steady lad while Constor likes to put these little accelerations because that's what, where he finds he can climb he can deal with that um sort of increase in lactate and then get rid of it very well which some people can some people can't it's just your physiology um but yeah Constor, the same with Ryder Hezzel, he just knows like he's an absolute stick he's got no sprint on him and he, like no sort of surging on him he just knows all he has to do is just ride full up his climb get top 10 Giro and you know the team's happy he's happy and this is where Contador goes. Contador is like, you know what, let's, let's sack it off, let's sack it off. I'm not not losing to Kreiswijk. I've already already put Arrow in the bin, put Trofimov in the bin. I'm going to put Lander in the bin, and I'm going to put Arrow in the bin, then Kreiswijk in the bin, and I'm going to win the whole Jira. Oh, fair enough, mate. Um, so he, he closes that gap pretty easy. And you think, like, 
you know, this is a steep climb. You know, most people would be like, I don't want to surge across and look at Lander. This is when, you know, Lander should be the GC leader because he comes across that gap so easily. Um, again, you know, those two guys were really the standout climbers. Obviously, Christwright was really, really good on the stage, but not as consistent if you watch the whole Giro. But you can see that Arrow um, was just not up to it. And, you know, this is when you think Team Sky had a situation, they would have said to um, Lander, they said, you can win. But um, they didn't. They they trusted Arrow. We now skip quite far, far forward, 34k to go. And this is really when you start to see the big cracks opening up. 1 minute 40 to Arrow. That's a lot of time lost in the last 4 or 5 kilometers. And that really was the end of Arrow's GC bid. Um, they could have played Arrow and Lander together. They should have done. Um, instead, they didn't. They just made Lander ride tempo for Arrow. Arrow got spat. You see how far Andor was back and still managed to catch up with him. And um, they're coming over the top of the climb now. Um, you can see it looks a lot colder. They've got their jerseys zipped up. It's, the Tifosi are going absolutely mental on the side of the road. It's been absolutely love to see in Italy. Um, obviously, it's a big shame having no Giro this year. Maybe no tour. I don't want to talk about it. It's just making me really upset. Um, but there's some more pencils. There's some more pencils. There's Andor who got spat and has now come back to Arrow. Arrow's off one minute 50 on a climb. And Shiri Arrow is not going to win the Giro. Um, he hadn't won a GC before in this year. Obviously, 2015 World, so he did win. I um, managed to put Demir in the bin in the penalty day, I believe it was. Um, on one of the steep climbs, which if there's some footage, I will put up. But obviously, yeah, so um, know how to use YouTube a little bit more. The Giro a bit back old school, didn't really get on the YouTube thing. So all this footage is up, which is absolutely lovely to see. Um, you can see Arrow at the back. Just, I mean, sorry, Lander at the back. Just looks like he's chilling, doesn't it? And obviously, it's a Style, but they don't look like they're Remember, going full. Prize the looks like it's going full. And they're coming over the top and now. And you can see all the barriers. Everyone's just getting a little bit of gel, with a little bit of newspaper down themselves, keep warm. They've got descent and it's sort of like a climb. And it's, it's a flat um, finale. Uh, and Contador and Kreisweig and Lander are going to go on to contest the finale while Arrow is getting pushed up by the Tifosi because they know it's cheerio for the old man. But I'm a big fan of Arrow. I, I love the man. And um, his 14th last year in the Tour de France, people will take the piss out of him. It's not good. But considering he literally barely rode that year, had an iliac artery, ar artery surgery, I think he could be a really good shout for um, top 10 GC. Um, obviously, Pagaccio rides for his team as well, so it's not ideal. But Contador this year was unbelievable. 2015. Um, he could have won the Tour, I reckon, if he'd hadn't done the Giro, but he wanted the Tour Giro double because he'd already won the Tour and he won the Giro and wanted to do it in both meets in the same year, so I understand that. Um, but I really think he could have beaten the Froome because he's the only rider I've seen recently who could climb at a better level. So here we go, eight minutes back. I don't really know why this footage is showing, but it shows the GC afterwards, which is why I kept it in. But um, Lang won the stage about two minutes ahead of um, Arrow and Contador and quite at the same time and then shot them up in a couple of ways a little bit further back. But you can see it was sort of a flattish finale with some more, more randies. Um, and here goes the overall standings. And you can see Lando four minutes back, Arrow 452 and Amador 548. And this is a big gap. So that's a huge gap. Thank you for watching. Hope you did enjoy. More videos to come. As obviously coronavirus means there's no live footage, but I will go through the archives and find some top class footage for you. Thank you for watching. Hope you did enjoy. And I'll see you later. Took it very, very early on at Abetone stage five. He's only had one night where it hasn't been on the chair next to him ever since, and that was when Fabio Aru took it. Big, big sigh of relief. What might have been where he'd been distanced. Kissing the pink jersey already, and perhaps realizing that this is the moment where realistically, unless Lander gets even better and even better, and Condor has a crisis, this could be the moment that he makes the pink jersey his own. Five more days to hang on until Milan. And Alberto Condor in pink and looking very, very pretty indeed.